Normal cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum do not hide the transaction amount. Confidential transactions solve that problem by hiding coin amount of transactions using Peterson commitments. In this presentation, we are going to explain how to extend confidential transactions for multi-parties. First, I will explain the difference between normal cash transactions and confidential transactions. Then, I will explain why we cannot extend confidential transactions for multi-parties directly. Then, I will explain a new multi-party confidential transaction protocol that is resistant to the previous attack. Typical cash systems store coin balance in plain text. Let's take an example. There's Alex who owns 10 coins. Now Alex wants to send this 10 coin to Bob. To do that, Alex sent a transaction saying that send 10 coins to Bob with his signature. Then the cash system verifies the transaction. If the transaction is valid, they transfer coins to Bob. The aim of the confidential transactions is to hide the coin amount but make sure that no one can steal or illegally generate coins. To build a confidential transaction protocol, we need Peterson commitments, digital signatures and zero knowledge range proofs. Before explaining the confidential transaction protocol, I am going to briefly explain its building blocks. Peterson commitments are based on discrete log problem. Assume there are two generators, G and H, but we don't know the relation between G and H. A Peterson commitment for a value V and a secret key K is G into K and H into V. Even though the value V is chosen from a small range, due to the random secret key, we can perfectly hide the value inside the Peterson commitment. Also, Peterson commitments are additively homomorphic as shown in the equation. Now we know that Peterson commitments are perfectly hiding, but for cash systems, we need to know that the hidden cash amount is not negative. For that, we need zero knowledge range proofs. A valid range proof can be only created if the creator knows the secret signing key of the Peterson commitment and the value is in the valid range. Also, range proofs hide the value V and the secret key K. Therefore, once we are given our Peterson commitment, our zero knowledge range proof, we can make sure that the hidden value of the commitment is in the valid range. For example, it's not negative. Confidential transactions need signatures based on discrete log problem. For example, Schnorr signatures or BLS signatures. Let's take the same generator that we used in Peterson commitments. If the signing key is K, then the public key of the digital signature scheme becomes G into K. Also, we can create the signature for a message M by taking the secret signing key and the message. Once we are given the public key and the message, we can verify the validity of the signature. Now we can explain confidential transactions. Instead of coin amounts in plain text, we store Peterson commitment in the cash system. Similar to the previous example, Alex wants to send 10 coins to Bob. First, Alex chose a temporary key K, temp. Then he create a signature on an empty message 
where the signing key of the signature is the difference between the temporary key and the key of the Peterson commitment. Then he create a transaction stating the current commitment, the new commitment and the range proof for the new commitment and the signature. Then he send the transaction to the cash system. A similar transaction can be used to isolate coin. For example, if Alex has 12 coins and only wants to send 10 coins, he can send a transaction with two new commitments where each has 2 and 10 coins. After receiving a transaction, we need to verify the transaction. First, we calculate the access value of the transaction. As you can see, the access value is the public key for the signature. Then, we verify the signature and the range proof of the Peterson commitment. An important thing to notice is we need to know the secret key of the commitment to create a valid transaction. Using that property, we can stop stealing. Then, Alice sent temporary key to Bob. Now, both Bob and Alice know the secret key of the current commitment. So, Alice can take coins back. To prevent that, Bob needs to mod modify the Peterson commitment. Similar to the previous transaction, Bob chooses a new key and sends a transaction updating the output commitment. Once it is done, only Bob can spend coins. Now we can say coin sending is complete. What about sending coins to multi-parties where all of them must agree to spend coins? Let's take an example that Alex want to send coins to both Bob and Charles. A direct approach that we can see is Alex chooses two secret keys and updates the secret key of the Peterson commitment to the addition of these two secret keys. Then he sends secret keys separately to Bob and Charles. In the receiving phase, Bob and Charles need to change their secret keys. So both of them chose secret keys separately and create their own commitment. After that, they agree to one common commitment, which is the addition of their commitment. Even though this protocol is correct, this protocol is not secure or sound due to a rogue key attack. First, Bob computes his commitment and sends it to Charles. Now, Charles also creates a valid commitment, but as shown in the red color equation, Charles sends a rogue commitment to Bob. At the end, Bob and Charles agree to a rogue commitment and now Charles know the complete secret key and Bob's secret key is not in the new commitment. Our aim is to build a multi-party confidential transaction protocol which is secure against these rogue key attacks. Not only that, our aim is to build that protocol to be compact and private. In other words, these transactions should be indistinguishable from single on transaction. Similar to the previous approach, Alex sent two different keys to Bob and Charles. Now, Bob selects a random XB and send G into XB to Charles. Charles also selects a random XC and send the public key GXC to Bob. As shown in the equation, the secret keys are computed as the multiplication of random X and with the hash of GXB and GXC. 
Therefore, Charles cannot convince Bob to agree to an clock commitment like he did before. Now we have found a way to create multi-party Peterson commitment. Still, we want multi-party signatures and range proofs. For signatures, we can use compact multi-signatures like compact show signatures or compact PLS signatures. For the range proof protocol, we extend bulletproof range proofs for multi parties. There are other range proof protocols like Boromine range proofs, but we choose bulletproof range proofs due to its logarithmic size growth. One of the most important difference in multi-party confidential transactions and original confidential transaction protocol is the message of the signatures. Original confidential transactions generate signatures on empty messages, but multi-party confidential transactions must sign on access value to make sure that after the transaction creation, no one can inject raw commitment to the transaction. In this presentation, we are not going to explain the multi-party bulletproof range proof protocol. The key property of MBP is they are compact, private, more importantly, co-owners don't have to reveal their secret keys to compute proofs. Now we have compact and private multi-signatures, compact and private multi-party range proofs. Therefore, the entire transaction is compact and private. These are the confidential transaction protocols and their use cases. Confidential transaction was introduced by Ethereum Maxwell. Later, it was used to create an aggregate cache system called Nimble Wimble. Later, Fulstra updated the initial Nimble Wimble protocol with syncing signatures. The formal security of extended Nimble Wimble was shown in EuroCrypt 2019 for Snow and BLS signatures. However, none of them does not support multi party transactions. Green and Beam are two Nimble Wimble cryptocurrencies. Green supports multi-party confidential transactions, but they are not compact or private. Our compact multi-party confidential transactions support compact Snow and BLS signatures and multi-party bulletproof range proofs. Also, we give formal security reductions for multi-party bulletproof range proofs and multi-party confidential transaction protocol. We talked about how confidential transactions improve privacy of cryptocurrencies. Then we explain why extending confidential transaction for multi-parties is not straightforward due to the raw key attacks. At the end, we explain how our multi-party confidential transaction protocol prevent raw key attacks and support compact and private multi-party transactions. Thank you.